my name is Tell Butler, and today I have a presentation for you. Uh, the presentation is the potential location for a new adaptive reuse building, uh, taking an office building and converting that uh, into a boutique hotel. Uh, the location is Midland, Texas, which is a growing center of uh, uh, business commerce within the state of Texas. It's been a sleeper over the past 10 or 12 years, but it's, there are some very important elements that are involved now in seeing that community grow. And today, as we go through this presentation, I want to point out to you some basic things. First of all, this is only a conceptual video. This is an informational video. So there's not a lot of detail for uh, financials or detail that go into uh, deep elements of the design, but primarily this is just informational as this project begins and as it begins to walk through the next step. So realize that this project is only in the conceptual phase uh, at this point in time. So let me talk a little bit about some of the things that you're going to see in the video today. We're just, I'm just going to present some very, very basic facts uh, about the Midland, Texas market. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the fact where the hotel is located, and you'll see that in the, in the uh, video uh, shortly. Also, you're going to see that uh, there's some other things involved in the uh, video that are going to be places that are very, very important uh, for the success of this hotel, things that will actually activate the hotel and make it uh, a, uh, a property that will be worthy. Uh, the other thing too is we're going to talk very briefly about some of the things that went into the design on this and we're going to also talk for just a moment about or we're going to look at rather in the video some examples of amenities in another project that are very very similar and, and these uh, these examples actually came from a very recent completion uh, of another adaptive reuse project, which also was a, uh, an office building that was converted into a, a very fine boutique hotel. So uh, those are the things that we're going to look at today. Uh, we're going to all you'll also see uh, in the conceptual uh, uh, renderings that are there. You'll see that there is another property that is right next to. Uh, the basic structure, which is a new uh, construction property, and it will be a, uh, a convention center, a meeting area that has some sustainable uh, facets to it, a green roof, a water feature. So um, we're going to look at some of those things in the video today, and these are some of the major topics that I want you to think about as we're looking at this. First of all, the intention of the presentation again is just to give you a brief history uh, and an overview of the project. So what you're going to see in the video produced is a brief introduction also to the student architect members uh, from Texas A&M and an explanation of their role in the project. And you'll see their beautiful faces in just a minute. And then we are going to be looking at the older building as it is still in its physical present state. Uh, it is or was called the Western United Insurance Building. Uh, it's located at 300 West Texas Avenue in the downtown Midland Central Business District. This building was originally designed and constructed uh, in 1952 and then, re and then about a year later when it was repurchased, uh, six more stories were added to the building and uh, that, that construction was completed or that expansion was completed in 1963. So the current structure, the, uh, uh, the general built area for that building is approximately 166,000 square feet. The floor plates are approximately 14,000 square feet each. And uh, unfortunately, the building has been vacant for 10 years. The doors have been chained, and there's broken glass and debris, er debris everywhere. So it's a great opportunity for taking a good, solid, uh, poured-in-place concrete uh, cantilever frame and turning that into a great asset due to its location. So the Texas A&M senior level design students were given the task to do one of two things, to either uh, take the existing building, take advantage of the historical preservation tax credit that the city was willing to offer, and uh, not modify the exterior of the building, but keep it basically the same with cleanup and some other improvements. 
and uh, they, they could do that and reuse the existing property with those minimum changes on the exterior or they could also take that and demolish the building and construct new. So those were the two choices that they had. They also had the opportunity to construct new on a couple of properties that were right next door uh, to the uh, Western United Life Insurance Building. So uh, that's what we're going to see here now. The, uh, in the uh, uh, new conferencing center, the way it has been planned conceptually is approximately 12,000 square feet. It is connected uh, to the main structure through a secured covered uh, bridge or, or glass walkway. And hopefully the hotel, if it's finished out the way that it is planned right now, will provide approximately 210 keys. Uh, the maximum uh, that has been uh, given to us for keys uh, is 200 because once we uh, step over that threshold, it creates a demand for a whole new level of uh, operations management. So even though we're saying it has approximately 210 keys, that space could possibly be used for, for other uses, and we won't get into that today. Now, in talking about how a, a land development graduate student has worked with uh, the uh, uh, senior level architecture students, the primary thing that I tried to focus on was keeping them focused on the four main essentials of quadruple net value, which is the primary means for developing a design that is focused on achieving sensory values and also the uh, enduring aspect of creating a sustainable building. So that's very important. And I've listed here for you what those principles are, uh, economic, social, cultural, environmental, and the perceptual or sensory. Uh, which includes all senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. And we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail after we view the video. So the combination team uh, was there to create a design that embodies uh, the, uh, the upscale end <coughs> excuse me, of, the, uh, of the hotel tenancy or occupancy uh, because the downtown area is lacking seriously in that type of space that attracts that level of uh, travel and uh, the, uh, the services of a full service type hotel with, with amenities, comfort and charm is another thing that is a, that is a real need in the downtown area. Secondly, uh, the team was, as I mentioned earlier, was tasked with creating this conference space which adjoins the property through a secure protected connector link and these conference spaces will be used to hold something very important that was desired by the local area and that is social events such as weddings and, and uh, receptions and then meeting spaces that would house conferences within the convenience of being located right next door to the hotel. Now as you'll see in a minute there is a, there is a new convention center there which is just located about a block and a half from our site. It's called the George Bush Convention Center. That convention center was recently completed this past summer and uh, we had the uh, uh, fortunate experience of being able to go and tour the convention center. It's a beautiful building but there are some limitations about using only that convention center for uh, other types of conventions. It could be full at a particular time, it could be occupied by a reservation so there, it may not always be available. So. I think it's, a, it's been a very good idea to have a conference area that can be divided up into different spaces and used by people, not only in the hotel, but other businesses that are located in the downtown central business district. Now these are some of the things I want to remind you about, and as you see the video today, I'd like for you to look in the video and use your mind to think about some of these things. So if we look at the quadruple net value, aspect of this. Again, I mentioned a while ago that it is a combination of sustainable development and sensory value and that is what brings the appeal of a project like this. And these are the things that, that are cut that are the four major things, the economic, the social, cultural, the environmental, and the sensory. So we know that by a uh, uh, 
we'll talk about this in just a minute, we know that this is a quantifiable way to do development. We know now from past history and experience uh, that there is a way to quantify these things and we have seen the results. Uh, of course, for a hotel like this, the primary uh, reason is to attract repeat visitors. That's very important. And the other thing, too, is to have other businesses located within that facility. Businesses that will attract other businesses or that will attract customer repeat returns. Restaurants, retail space. Things that not only the hotel patrons can enjoy, but also things that will attract other people in the downtown area. And another thing that's very important on the social, social culture part is creating that sense of community that draws people together and it needs to tell the story of the local history. So that local history needs to be stated, it needs to be displayed, it needs to be felt by the people that come to visit that space, and it's those kinds of things that attract people to come. The other thing is the environmental. Uh, the environmental aspect is important because it talks about the fact that, that we use sustainable ter uh, materials, such as efficient windows, more sustainable building materials, and that we use the site creatively to take a solution to little problem areas perhaps and convert that to something that actually turns that into a very, very desirable feature of the project. And then finally, the sensory, the, all the senses are included, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. So when one visits a property like this, they have that sensory, they, they want, the developer wants them to have that sense of uh, uh, seeing things physically, uh, hearing the sound of music in there, and other people visiting there. They want to have the ability to, to taste good food. They want to have the ability to smell beautiful things that are in the landscaping. And so <clears throat> all those things are wrapped up into something that make it, make it desirable and make it magnetic for people to want to come back to a project like this. And then the other thing, too, we, we, want, we want to talk about is Okay, that's great, we know about QNV, but what else is really important in addition to that or equally as important to that in making this a really viable project? Conceptualization, and that is, I think, one of the most important things, and that is the development concept that requires a laser alignment with the real need of what's there, not just a gut feeling, but the real need based on actual data that shows people have the spendable income to come there, they will visit that type of project, and that's a very important aspect of that. Design, and that's adding value through the design. Simulation, modeling, and testing, and that's what I spoke to you about a few minutes ago when I said this type of uh, uh, testing and modeling can be done through the immersive environment. So there are ways to test these concepts. The delivery is the building the product on time and enter with, with uh, perhaps under budget, provided that the acceptance criteria of the project goals are met. That's very important, and, they, and that has to stay in line. Many times as we develop things, uh, and some things push our budget a little too far in one direction or the other, uh, it's important, even if we have to best value some things, uh, to still stay within our project budget, but also to make sure that it does align uh, with what the real needs are. And then activation and marketing, that's positioning the brand of the type of development and the, and the other type of developments that are done similar. Uh, it does provide income, it does provide jobs, uh, and, and in, in addition to that, creating that environment and continuing to enhance and enrich that environment brings back that repeat visitation, which is most desirable. But the ownership and the commitment on the part of the development is key to this. And I know that you've seen many projects in the past where, for example, like our local post oak mall that has really gone down over the years. It was built in 1985, but when you visit that property, you see now how it's gone down and the type of tenants that are attracted to that facility are either local businesses or their businesses that were there that were national brands that are now leaving the market. So it's important for that ownership and commitment uh, on the part of the developer to be maintained. And of course, management is the continual commitment for quality control of the asset, 
nurturing the asset in a manner that positions and enhances the asset on a continuing basis. Those are the things that perpetuate an enduring value over the